Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today here we have Armando's S550, aka Con Queso, on Instagram. We're gonna be doing a full 3P install on his car. Uh, he's going on the airlift performance with the Bluetooth. He's currently on a coilover setup. He just installed these about three weeks ago and he bought an airlift kit now. Airlift is having a sale on their full kits for 25% off. So now's your chance to, you know, get a really good deal on these kits. Yeah, today we're gonna be installing his kit. His car is currently super low on the coilovers, so he's having issues with rubbing in the bottom with this Ravini lip up front all the time. So this is definitely going to take his car to the next level and help him with that. Check out his car, it looks super clean, all blacked out. He's got the Boston wheels, 50 year anniversary, diffuser, Roush, exhaust. Really clean setup, so he's about to take his car to the next level with this Airlift 3P kit. You can see us completely remove his old suspension and reinstall the 3P with the management. We're gonna go be running the lines inside of his car. He's gonna be having the remote coming out of his center console up towards the center of the car. For his compressor, he's gonna be hiding it underneath in his wheel wheel area. So we're gonna be putting his compressor down here and his tank is gonna be mounted up top. It's gonna be a really clean setup. But yeah, let's get to installing the kit. And yeah, taking his S550 to the next level. So let's get started with the install. We're gonna start by removing his stock components, stock rear suspension, front suspension wheels, all that good stuff and then installing all the airlift suspension into there. As we mentioned earlier, he does have BC Racing coilovers already in there that he installed three weeks ago. Those are gonna be put up for sale, so if anybody is interested in picking those up, go ahead and DM him or us on Instagram. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the installation of this airlift 3P kit. So we finished getting all of his stock suspension out. Well, it's actually aftermarket. He has BC Racing coilovers in there. We got everything out. The rear springs, the front sway bar end links, the front struts, rear struts. Everything is out of the car. We're going to go ahead and start installing the airlift suspension kit. Uh, we're going to start by installing the suspension and then go with the management and the airlines. So as you guys can see, it's a full replacement kit. You replace the springs with bags on the kit. Uh, it is full digital Bluetooth, so it's a really nice upgrade. These kits are currently 25% off, so if anyone's interested on picking a kit up, go ahead and send us a message, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.
So guys, as you can see, we already installed the electrical. Um, we went ahead and put the water trap on this right side. The manifold is plugged in. Uh, we already did the fill line, which is coming from the compressor that is mounted in the wheel well. Right now we're installing the front right hand line. So it's gonna run pretty much with the rest of the electrical. And Manny is installing the line right here. He's running it through the inside of the car, putting it all underneath the carpeting. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it to run out of this hole on, in the firewall and uh, install it into the airline here that we have coming out of the, the bag. We got everything plumbed through the car, the lines and the electrical. We still got to button everything down. We are going to go ahead and run a leak test. Go ahead and leave the car overnight with air on all four wheels. Leave air in the tank and make sure nothing is leaking. Um, as of now, everything looks good. There's no leaks anywhere. We already went ahead and sprayed all the fittings. And uh, yeah, there's no leaks on the fittings. So we're going to go ahead and leave the car overnight. And come back in the morning. Make sure that nothing is leaking. Uh, we went ahead and put pressure on all four corners. We put about 120, 118 PSI on all four corners. Left the tank with 146 overnight. We're going to come back in the morning and uh, make sure none of those numbers have uh, gone down by a lot. Um, they are going to move a little bit because there there is no weight on the car, so everything's still expanding. But as long as there's nothing too crazy or, you know, too low, it's going to be normal for it to move. Once we get through the leak test and make sure there's nothing leaking out of the car, we're going to go ahead and put the just the front rotors brakes and then uh, put the wheels back on stuff like that the rear is pretty much all put together we just got to throw in his rear seats and put all the carpeting back in stuff like that and yeah this is pretty much how everything is installed right now everything's kind of just left out we still got to cut some lines uh, protect some lines from uh, any sharp edges and stuff like that zip tie everything down properly so yeah we'll see you guys in the morning we just got here this morning we're gonna go ahead and check the car make sure there's no leaks in the tank or the bags we're gonna go ahead and check the pressure um as i told you yesterday before we left uh things are gonna move around a little bit but if there's a leak uh the, the change is gonna be you know quite a bit and it's gonna keep dropping uh with time so we're gonna go ahead and check the pressure make sure that things haven't moved around too much um, so yeah, there you go. There's 144 PSI in the tank, and we left all the bags at around 119, 120-ish. Um, and yeah, we right, now, right now we put the car down on the ground, so, uh, the pressure moved around a little bit. But if there was a leak, you would have already seen the pressure on the bags under 100 or, you know, under 110. But, you know, nothing has dropped, uh, by a lot, so you could tell there's no leaks by that. I'm gonna go ahead and start reassembling the entire car. We're gonna put... All of the fender liners on, zip tie all the lines, all of the electrical, make sure nothing's in the way of uh, when he's driving and stuff like that. Nothing gets uh, caught by his wheels. You got to make sure everything is uh, strapped down properly. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and start doing all that and get this car ready for the customer to pick up this morning. We got everything all back on the car, it's all reassembled, 
Uh, as you can see, we mounted his compressor down under here. Uh, his lines are all nice and clean going that way. Everything is hidden. There's no exposed lines anywhere. Um, his tank is mounted up on top with the manifold up there. His water trap, his relay, everything is mounted on this side behind everything. All of the lines are ran behind all the carpets in the in the back of the car. They all run to the inside of the car through the carpet. Uh, underneath they go through the firewall into the front struts. Everything is ready to go. We went ahead and set up his damper settings for his struts. All of the electrical comes through the firewall. It's all hidden. You can't really see any of the lines. Everything does look OEM. Uh, you do have these little knobs up here to adjust the damper settings. Um, so it's currently set uh, all the way tight and one back. Um, all four corners are set like that. He can go ahead and mess with that and fine tune it after he figures out how tight he wants the suspension. Um, for the rear, the damper adjustment uh, knob is underneath the uh, top mount. It's a little knob that spins. Uh, you turn it to the left to stiffen the suspension. You turn it to the right to, right to soften everything up. Everything is all set the same, so it's all set on the tighter side of the suspension. Other than that, you know, everything looks really clean. Uh, his tank doesn't really get in the way. All the lines are hidden. Nothing's exposed. Nothing's going to get caught with anything coming into his trunk. He still has all his trunk space. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and finish putting the car down, roll it back, and take care of this. In order to get into the menu for the airlift controller, you want to go ahead and push the airlift and the button right on top of it at the same time. And that's going to take you into the menu. Uh, then you can go ahead and go down into calibration and start the calibration is going to ask you a few questions so is the car in a vehicle surface yes front wheels are straight yes you want to make sure your front wheels are straight because the car is going to go up and down and if your wheels are not straight uh, you're going to damage your fenders so you want to make sure your wheels are straight uh, are your wheels free from obstructions make sure that there's nothing in the way uh, you want to make sure your manifold is mounted vertically and not in any other position. Uh, do you have one or two compressors? This it, this this car only has one. Uh, and then we're gonna do the auto calibration. Do you have height sensors? If you do, you that means you have a 3H kit. That's what has the sensors. So this kit does this this car does not have the 3H kit. So. We're going to select no and start the calibration. finished up the calibration uh, everything is successful the manifold is mounted correctly everything is mounted right there's no leaks anywhere um, we're gonna go ahead and exit the calibration so whenever your tank is under 130 psi your compressor is gonna go ahead and turn it on and fill it back up to one four, above 145 um, sometimes it'll go 147 sometimes it'll go to 150 so that it's doing that right now the, so the way this airlift controller works is it does have five presets. The center airlift button is normally you're going to be your daily driver. Um, currently set at 50 from the factory. Then you have on top of it 75 on all four corners. And underneath you have 25 on all four corners. And all the way in the bottom, which is fully aired out, uh, is zero on all four corners. So you could go ahead and set these to whatever you want. Um, then you have pretty much each wheel, each corner on the sides. These, this will control your front left. This is your up and down for your front right, up and down for the rears. And yeah, so you could customize everything. You can go ahead and air out just um, your left side and air up the front right. And you know, pretty much make the car be lopsided. So as you can see here, this side is all the way down. The other side is all the way up. So you have the freedom to go ahead and move any wheel any way you want. Um, so yeah, that's that's what all these buttons on the sides are for. This is to control every uh, every corner individually. 
So this is normally what your right height is going to be around. So we don't recommend your right height to be 50 on all four corners. That's a little low. Um, some people like the low life, but you're going to end up damaging something. So I normally would recommend 75. Um, this is a little lower than stock height, kind of running springs on all four corners. So as you can see here, uh, the fitment's pretty good there. And the front is also uh, pretty good. You're able to turn without hitting anything. Your front, the front of your car isn't too, too low. Um, but yeah, that could be just your daily driver. If, if you wanna, if you're rolling into a show or anything like that, you can go ahead and go down to the 50-50. Just you know, it'll give the car more of a of a of a coilover look. Uh, everything will be much more nice, nicely lined up with the wheels. So as you can see here, you have a lower back, a little bit of tuck in the rear, and then the front is pretty much flush with your fender. So you're still able to turn and stuff like that, but it sits a little lower. Um, but yeah, the calibration is done. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and call the customer, let him know his car is ready for pickup. And yeah, everything is set. But one thing you wanna make sure you always have on is ride on start. Uh, the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna go ahead and push the air lift and the button right above it sim simultaneously. And then you're gonna go down to operations. Uh, rise on start and you're gonna turn that on you want to have that on so that you know you want to make sure that you don't air out and you forget to air back up and uh, and yeah you end up so you want to make sure you have the auto rise on start on um, it's just better to be safe sorry that way whenever you turn your car on it automatically lifts by itself so you can hard park when you go get groceries and whenever you turn your car back on and get in it's automatically gonna rise on itself you don't have to be worried about that you know uh, I've seen multiple times where people forget that their car is there out they turn it on and they turn and they mess up their fenders um, but yeah you wanna go ahead and make sure you turn that setting on um, and yeah other than that everything is Bluetooth you could download the airlift app from Play Store, Google Store, um, Apple Store, all that stuff. And you could, you don't need this controller. You can control everything from your phone. Uh, it's a really nice controller, so you could have this mounted in here somewhere. You could hide it in your in your uh, center console just in case your phone dies. But you could normally have your phone sitting up here with all your airlift uh, settings out and stuff like that. So it's a really cool, cool setup by airlift. Uh, this is their 3P and 3H comes with this controller. They no longer offer the V2, which had the smaller controller. Uh, this is all they offer now is the 3P and 3H. So yeah, if any of you guys are interested in getting one of these kits, go ahead and send us a message. Uh, nextlevelstyling.com Level is just spelled LVL. Um, on Instagram, you can find us at Next Level Styling. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and cut into some clips of the, of the car now with the bags. And hope you guys enjoy.